Hi Nat5, so this is the transport systems in animals. We are looking at the blood vessels that you have inside you. So we're going to look at three types of blood vessel inside your body, the artery, the capillary and the vein. That covers the majority of the blood vessels. There are bits in between, but these are the main ones. So your arterial system is spread through your whole body. Okay, it is a main line that splits into smaller arteries as it moves through. And you know where that main line is coming from. That's the aorta coming out of the left ventricle. They are going away from the heart and because they've just been pushed out from the heart, the blood is at high pressure. And you can actually feel that high pressure because that's a pulse. And so anywhere where you've got a reasonably sized artery, you can feel that surge as it goes through. That is your pulse of your heart beating. The name of the artery tells you where it's going. So like your renal artery is going to your kidney and carotid is going to your head. So the aorta, just to give you a kind of nicer picture of this, I think, is the main blood vessel coming out of the heart. You know that. And you have this, what's called the aortic arch. And then once it's actually come out of the heart, it splits into smaller and smaller things as it's carrying your blood through. Um, on this one, you actually can't see the coronary arteries, but you know that they are also really important to come out from the aorta. It's oxygenated blood and it's carrying everything you need. The veins... Well, the veins are basically the opposite bit of the arteries, so they also are all the way through your blood, your body, and they're returning blood to the heart. So they look, it looks kind of similar, but you have some kind of complicated bits round about your gut. You can see this is this is looking a little bit fancier than your artery system did there, um, and you should look at that in a bit more detail when you look at the villus. Okay, blood pressure here is low, and that's because after the pulse, it goes arteries, then capillaries, and then to veins. So it's been passed through loads of small blood vessels. And if it was still at high pressure at that point, it would rupture them. So as it spreads through them, the pressure drops and drops. So the blood pressure is low and that causes some problems. Okay, the problem is that blood can go backwards. Now, if you think about it, you're trying to get blood to your heart. If you've got blood in your big toe, how you actually get that to get up to your heart without just constantly falling back down is really important. And how you do it is you use valves again. Now you have valves in the heart which are there to stop the backflow of blood in the heart. This is exactly the same thing. So what you're doing here is you're stopping blood from going back the way in the veins. So what happens is you have these nice very clever in terms of how it works. We have non-return valves. So the blood goes up in through past the, these valves, but then it can't go back down them again. So even though the blood is at low pressure, it constantly moves up through the veins and then doesn't go back down through them. So if we do a side-by-side -side comparison of arteries and veins, there's a lot in common. They're about the same diameter if we look across them but the internal diameter is different and that's all to do with pressure. So the arteries have a much, much thicker internal wall here than the veins do, which means that the arteries have a narrower internal diameter than the veins do. And that's, as I said, all about pressure. So the arteries have to have this extra thick wall to withstand the fact that they're getting a surge in pressure all the time. They even have some extra kind of elastic fibres around the outside to keep snapping it back into place. And if you've got high blood pressure, that's one of the problems that you have is that you're constantly straining the arteries and eventually that can cause damage. OK, so we have a thicker wall in the artery, inner diameter will be narrower and the opposite in the veins. And then the veins also have valves. So our last type of blood vessel is the capillary. And it's really essential because the capillary is where you actually do exchange. Up until this point, if you're in an artery, all the blood is locked away inside a thick pipe. You can't actually get it out of that to the tissue where you need it. But the capillaries are tiny. So when you get to where you want to be, they spread through all of the body tissues and are small enough that you can get diffusion. So your oxygenated blood, as it goes through the blood tissue in the capillaries, these are only one cell thick, you can get diffusion from inside the capillary to the, to the tissue. And the tissue that's produced, say, carbon dioxide and other waste materials, that will be diffused into the capillaries. The capillaries then join back up again 
and you get bigger and bigger blood vessels and you've now got a vein and the vein now has that all locked up inside to take it back to the heart to go out to the lungs etc etc and it just goes round and round. The capillary network is really important because it does this exchange and the four things that increase diffusion they have thin walls one cell thick they have a large surface area because they are tiny so therefore you can have loads more of them and they because they've got a liquid inside them blood and there's tissue fluid outside that's going to help diffusion because you can dissolve things and then really really importantly you've got a good transport system if the blood is constantly moving through then it's constantly bringing oxygenated blood in so you're constantly bringing in a high oxygen which means the diffusion is going to allow it to move so the three that you're expected to give consistently is the good transport system the large surface area and the thin walls and you're also going to look at them when it comes to exchange in absorption of materials in key area seven and that's us